Let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Vyond at this hour, where Japan has now declared a state of emergency in its capital city of Tokyo. And this comes as COVID-19 cases have surged to their highest levels since the beginning of the pandemic. And the emergency will be in place from the 8th of January until the 2nd of February. It applies to Tokyo and three other neighboring prefectures. This covers about 30% of the country's population and restrictions include combating transmission in bars and restaurants. The Yoshihide Suga also dismissed calls to declare a state of emergency in the month of November earlier. The Japanese government has been seeking to limit the damage to the world's third largest economy, but the number of infections have doubled since then. And authorities are now aiming to start a vaccination campaign in the country sometime towards the end of February. This also comes as Japan is looking ahead at staging the postponed Summer Olympics starting later in the month of July this year. And Tokyo's response to the emergency declaration has been pretty mixed. Some people have called it a much-needed measure, but others are concerned about its economic impact. Some have even called the government's efforts as simply too little too late. all right, now to give us more perspective in terms of what's actually unfolding in Japan, we're joined in by our correspondent Grace Lee, who's joining us live from Tokyo. Grace, thank you very much indeed for joining us on this broadcast on Vyond. And let me begin by asking you this. A state of emergency has now been declared in Tokyo and three other prefectures is what has been announced. But what does this actually mean? What will be allowed to remain open? and what closes down, and what does a state of emergency mean for the capital of Japan? Well, the state of emergency that we're seeing this time around is uh a, a bit more relaxed than the one we saw a few months ago. Uh, during the first state of emergency, most businesses were asked to close their doors. Everybody was asked to stay at home as much as possible. This time around, most businesses will remain open. Schools, uh, theaters, amusement parks, all of these facilities will remain open. However, restaurants and bars are being asked to close their doors by about 8 p.m. and stop serving alcohol by 7 p.m. Uh, bars, restaurants, the food scene has been mostly targeted by the Japanese government uh, as spreading COVID-19 here. And there have been calls uh, from the public for the government to do more and to go beyond seeing just uh, the eatery scene as being responsible for COVID-19's spread. Uh, now, of course, there are also calls for businesses to make sure that their employees are working from home. Uh, but at the moment, if you walk outside here in Tokyo, it does seem mostly normal. During the first state of emergency, it was very quiet. The streets were quite empty. Uh, this time around, people are still going out. Um, people are still allowed to go out and eat uh, in groups smaller than four. Uh, some rules have been enforced, but largely medical experts have called these measures lackluster. Absolutely. Indeed. Some are in fact, criticizing these measures as nothing more than cosmetic. For instance, shopping malls have been allowed to stay open. So are movie theaters, museums, etc. So with, that, with this being the case and Tokyo witnessing a sharp surge in the number of infections in the course of the last few days, does this, is, does this measure even go on to address the problem of this spike that Japan is witnessing in terms of the COVID-19 infections? 
That's the big question that a lot of medical experts are asking. They also say, like the public is saying, that it's a little too late. Up until the end of uh, December, the government had been pushing a domestic travel subsidy program, asking people to travel amid the pandemic, giving them discounts for doing so. And that has been found to be partly responsible for the spread of COVID-19 that we're seeing right now. Of course, the prime minister does want to make sure that Japan's economy survives COVID-19. A lot of the Japanese workforce are part-time or non-regular workers, so they'll be the first to be out on the streets if a, a sweeping state of emergency is declared and everything shuts its doors. They won't be able to survive the end of this month, let alone uh, the rest of the pandemic. So he is keeping a mind on that. He's also keeping a mind on the Olympic Games, which is set to happen in just about six months now. He reiterated his stance that despite the spike in cases here in Tokyo, uh, the Tokyo 2021 Olympics will be going ahead. However, we did hear some doubt from a top IOC official, uh, International Olympics Committee member Dick Pound, uh, just a few hours ago saying that there is some doubt on whether or not Tokyo will be safe to host the Games uh, in the upcoming right. summer. Absolutely indeed. And my last question to you is, you know, in the United States and in, and in Europe, the inoculation drive began somewhere in the middle of December, but Japan says that it will start its vaccination program only towards the end of February. What explains this, this delay? Well, Japan has its own safety protocols to go through, uh, some extensive measures that they have to take before allowing inoculation to start here. And that's been a huge uh, concern for a lot of Japanese residents, especially seeing that the prime minister has promised that all Japanese residents will be able to get their COVID-19 vaccinations before the Olympics go ahead. Now, the end of February is when inoculations will start here. The prime minister says he'll be the first in line to receive a vaccination as well. But uh, the other side of this is that the IOC has also suggested that perhaps uh, people coming here for the Olympics should be vaccinated before arriving in Japan as well. So that'll be a whole other uh, a big measure that they have to deal with. And all of this comes amid a surge of COVID-19 cases, 2,500, uh, 2,400 rather, uh, just here in Tokyo uh, as daily counts continue to increase. So there's a lot right. of pressure on the government to make sure that uh, cases don't go overboard as they try to roll out the inoculation process. Absolutely, indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Grace Lee, for joining us from Tokyo and getting us all those insights then.